Hello everyone, welcome back. Welcome back to Quito, Ecuador. A beautiful, beautiful sunny morning here in Quito, Ecuador. Beautiful weather. Clear sky, nice sun, cool breeze. A wonderful day to go exploring and today we're going to explore one of Quito's beautiful urban parks. Parque La Carolina. Parque La Carolina. Very beautiful. Come along as we explore the park and some of the cool things in the park and around the park. Before we do that, I just want to say real quick thank you very much for watching the video. Click the like button and the subscribe button and leave a comment down below. It's free, it's easy, and it will help the channel grow and help this content reach other YouTube viewers. All right, back to the video. So we're here just at the south end of the park. And at the south end of the park here, there's a metro stop. Metro La Carolina. There's two entrances, one over there and one right here. And all throughout the park, there are these cool sculptures and little monuments and things. Beautiful, lots of trees, benches where you can sit down and paths to walk. It's a pretty big park. It runs uh, between two metro stops. The one here, La Carolina, and then at the north end of the park, there is uh, Iñaquito metro stop. And next to each one of the metro stops, uh, there's actually a big mall. So there's this mall right across the street here, which is Centro Comercial um, El Jardín. And at the other end by Iñaquito, there is the Centro Comercial Iñaquito. So there's like a lot of shopping options in this area, in this neighborhood. Um, this is actually one of the neighborhoods where uh, I was considering staying when I was playing my trip here to Quito, but I uh, didn't end up staying in this neighborhood, although I definitely would um, if I were coming back because it is a pretty cool neighborhood. The neighborhood of La Carolina, in addition to being like a, um, a good neighborhood to stay and also a good shopping neighborhood, um, it's also the financial center of Quito. There's a lot of financial office buildings, a lot of like bank headquarters in this area. Um, and the neighborhood itself, I would say, is, is pretty cool. It's walkable, like there's metro stop access at both ends. It's right along the metro line, so you don't have to like walk too far off the metro line to get to it. And uh, there's a lot of foot traffic through here during the day in the park. It's very nice. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk from, uh, from one end of the park to the other, and we're gonna see all the things that uh, there is to see in the park, because there's some pretty cool stuff in this park. So uh, let's check it out. So mixed in here amongst all the trees and the paths in the park, like I said, there's little sculptures, different monuments and things. Also like playgrounds. There's one out in the distance there, a playground for the kids, and a little dog park area for all the doggos. Doggos. Look at him. I do like a good dog park, you know. I don't have dogs. Uh, I'm actually allergic to dogs, so unfortunately, I can never really have a dog myself, but in small doses, I can hang around with dogs, and I like them. They're super fun. Look at all these doggos having fun out here in the park. Look at that guy. Adorable. All right, that's a little sidetrack, but let's continue our tour. It's a really, really good um, urban park. Now, Quito has a lot of parks. There's uh, this park. There's Parque El Ejido, which is to the south of here. A couple of metro stops. And there's also like some really big metropolitan um, eco parks, right? that are more like, um, less like a city park like this and more like a big nature park where you can hike through. So if you want parks and you want green space in your city, Quito is, uh, is pretty good for that, that's for sure. Now one of the things we want to see here in this park is the botanical garden 
which I think, hmm, I think might be like right up here. Let's go over there and see. There's a botanical garden. I think it costs just a small fee to enter, but it'd be cool to see. And in addition to that, I think there's a Japanese garden with like um, a lot of bonsai trees, like a bonsai park. I'd like to check that out. So this is actually not the Botanical Garden. The Botanical Garden's a little further north of here. But this is this man-made lake that's like a, a ring, basically. Almost like a moat around, uh, around this, uh, these like man-made islands. Over there, there's a, uh, like a sculpture of a condor, which we can go over and check out. And uh, here, apparently, the little island in the middle is a zona de ejercicios pasivos. It's like a meditation zone. And uh, there are some people meditating. Let's go over there and we'll check it out. We'll be quiet because we don't want to disturb anyone. Yeah, it's nice. Just this little, little round island in the middle. We can hang out and meditate. With the water going around the edge. Now, uh, I think, yeah, it looks like just over here, across the other side of the, the little man-made lake, there's a paddle boat rental. So if you want to, you can rent a paddle boat. I don't know how much it costs. We'll go over there and find out. But yeah, you can rent a paddle boat, paddle around the little lake. Very nice. Here's the statue of the condor. Statue of the condor here on this island. And uh, condors, condors are native to this, this part of South America. We saw them down in Peru flying around. I've seen them flying around here in Ecuador. And there's a statue right here. Statue for the condor. Take one last look at the statue of the condor before we head on. Now let's see. Go across the bridge here. Looks like there's some sort of, uh, lots of street vendor tents set up here, like vendors selling stuff, which is cool. More of them setting up over there. We're here in the morning, and, uh, I feel like during the middle of the day and probably in the afternoon, it's gonna get a lot busier here. But yeah, you can see, see a lot of people setting up for the day. We'll go over real quick to the, uh, paddle boat rental and see how much it costs. We're not definitely not renting a paddle boat today, but we'll see how much it costs. Also saw on the way across the bridge over to the paddle boat rental, there's a skate park over here. Uh, looks pretty big actually. There's like a pretty big bowl here. I don't know if it connects all the way over, um, but yeah, it's pretty cool. There's a bowl over there as well. I don't see a lot of like street stuff, mostly just bowls, but it's pretty cool. It goes all the way out to the street there, and uh, there's like a tunnel, a tunnel over there too. Pretty cool. It's nice having a skate park, honestly. Like I know uh, people in the city get mad at skateboards. I like skateboards, man. I don't skateboard myself, but I think skateboards are cool. They're just trying to have a good time, you know. But people get mad when skateboarders like you know they find stuff to skate on right buildings stairs railings stuff like that the businesses that own those stairs and those railings they get mad they don't want people skating on them so you make a skate park right that's nice it's a good compromise i think all right here we are we're coming up on the boat rental paddle boat rental Looks like it's open. There's some people getting in one of the paddle boats. People out there are already paddling. Let's check out and see how much it costs. 
Well, the dudes at the boat dock got a little salty about me filming uh, and not actually renting a boat. But it costs $5.90 for 30 minutes per boat, and you can fit, uh, I think, four people in a boat. So there you go. If you want to paddle around the lake, six bucks, you're good to go. So Parque La Carolina was originally a, uh, a farm. This whole area was a farm back in uh, 1939, I believe. The whole area of the land of the farm was bought by the city and they turned it into a park. Beautiful Parque La Carolina. Now up here is where the botanical garden is and in fact Right on the other side of this fence is where the Japanese bonsai garden is. So I want to check that out. And then there's another place I'm going to check out up a little further after we check out the botanical garden and the bonsai garden. There's a big cross here that's like the cross of the Pope. And they put it here, dedicated it to Pope John Paul II, who came here in 1985 and led like a huge Catholic mass here in the park, which is pretty cool. Let's see, is this uh, I can't tell if this is the Botanical Garden or not. Look, we're gonna find the entrance to the Botanical Garden and the Japanese Garden. I think it costs, oh, here's the entrance actually. Here's the Botanical Garden. I think it costs a couple bucks. So we'll pay that and we'll go in and we'll see what's in there. There it is, Jardin Botanico de Quito. Which uh, doesn't actually look like it's open right now. Um, Google Maps, of course, not always reliable. Said that it opens at 10. And uh, looks like the signs over here say it's open at 10 too, but someone's coming up. I think it looks like it's, it's going to open now. So we'll go in and we'll check it out. We'll be like the first people in. Okay, they are open. And uh, it's $4 to get in. Gets you access to the Botanical Garden as well as the Japanese bonsai garden and looks like a little aviary with like some birds, pajaros. It's very cool. They gave us this map and uh, it actually looks like it's quite large. So I'm, I'm really interested to see what's in here. I've heard that there are like, is there like a collection of orchids in here, which is really cool. I think orchids are very, very cool. And uh, before we go anywhere, I gotta use the bathroom. Hello, my friend. Quack, quack, my friend. Anyway, looks like they're doing some landscaping around this part. I've noticed they have these lights hanging here because I know from some of the research I did about this place ahead of time that they have events here at night where they light up these things. So the whole place is like lit up with colorful lights. That'd be pretty cool. I don't know how the ducks would feel about it. Anyway, let's keep moving. We had that. We got that map that tells us what everything is that we're looking at. Um, but it's kind of tricky to film and hold the map. Look at the map while you're filming. So uh, we say we just walk through here, freelance, right? We just freestyle it. Looks like there's a tour up ahead of us. So let's hang out here for just a second. What I'm gonna try and do is at some point, we'll get ahead of the tour, right? Cause they're gonna be moving really slow through here. And it's better to be ahead of them than to be behind them. Wow, this is really cool though. This reminds me of like a more extreme version of uh, the little mini botanical garden that was at uh, the ruins of Puma Pumbo, or Puma Pungo, rather, in Cuenca. Made two videos about that place. That place was really cool. Links to all videos, of course, that I mentioned are gonna be down in the description. But, uh, man, really is cool. Other than the, the sound of the weed whacker over there, it's very, very cool and very peaceful in here. All right.
Let's see if I can try and get ahead of the. Uh... Now this this spot they did mention, like that section through there, is uh, closed off because they're doing some kind of maintenance or something on it. So I think we're gonna have to we're gonna have to go around. I'm gonna try and get across this bridge and get ahead of the tour group. All right, we got ahead of the tour group. It's probably interesting to take a tour through here, you know, and learn about all the different plants and everything, but it would be in Spanish. We wouldn't understand much. And uh, we'll just do like we normally do. We'll freestyle. What is this? El Magico Recorrido del Agua Quito. The magic of, uh, the magic tour of the water of Quito. So here we go. We talked a little bit in Cuenca about the water and how the water is clean, you can drink the tap water um, in, in, Qui uh, in Cuenca. And here in Quito, I've heard that they have a pretty good water treatment system, but that specifically, depending on like what building you're in, sometimes the pipes can be bad. And so not everywhere in Quito is it safe to drink the water. I don't know if that's true or not. If there's any um, Ecuadoranos or Ecuadorianos in um, in the comments, let me know. If you live in Quito, do you drink the tap water? I've been drinking bottled water while I'm here just to be safe. Um, but I don't know. Maybe you could. Maybe you could drink the tap water, just depending on like what neighborhood you're in, how clean the pipes were. Here we have a quinine tree, the tree of the miraculous bark. The cascarilla or quinine is a tree native to Loja. Quinine, in addition to be using, made to, uh, used to make uh, tonic water, so you can have a delicious gin and tonic. Uh, quinine is a malaria cure, so they use or a preventative. Uh, it's either a preventative or a cure. But when people have malaria, they give them quinine as a treatment. And uh, it has apparently, according to the sign, saved millions of people. That's very cool. That's very cool. You know, I heard, I heard somewhere, and I don't know if this is true or not, like, this may be a uh, urban legend myth, but... I've heard somewhere that like the majority of people who have died like ever basically in the history of the planet have died from malaria. So malaria is like the single largest killer of people throughout history. I don't know. I wonder if that's true or not. Or if it's just a myth. Who knows? What do we have here? Colorful gardens. And they are very beautiful, colorful gardens. Let's see if we can get in here. Wow. Very beautiful. Oh, this goes all the way back in through here too. Very cool. Oh, there's some some more back there. Well, let's go through here. I think we may be in the like beautiful flower orchid section. There's this, whatever these are. What do you think these are? They're beautiful, whatever they are. There's some uh, lilies. Maybe this is where the orchids are. Are these orchids? Well, they're a little, they look a little sickly, these ones. Some little pretty yellow flowers here. And whatever these like lavender colored ones are. Those are nice. Here's the uh, stream coming through. Take a little bridge over the stream. This is where the frogs were supposed to be, but we didn't see any frogs. I'm still a little... A little miffed about that. 
I would have liked to see some frogs. Who knows? Maybe we'll still maybe we still will. Maybe we still will see some frogs. Head through here. I got all turned around. <laughs> we have that map. We can like uh check out that map and see exactly where we are um in a second here. Cause it did get a little turned around. We've stepped from like jungly to forest ferns to cacti on the desert. Wow, they have a huge collection here. This is like, look at all of these different kinds. And they're from all over the place too. Like these are, well, let's see. These are like from Mexico. This is uh, Argentina, Brazil, Paraguay, Uruguay. Mexico also. Mexico and the United States. Cool. All right, the orchids. Oh, we can. All right, so we're in the greenhouse now. It's very humid in here, a little muddy, but man, the orchids, we found them. This one's really beautiful. Orchids are like super, super fragile. They are very, very difficult. Difficult plants. Very, very picky, very touchy about like humidity and temperature and soil acidity and all kinds of stuff. I mean, most plants are, but orchids are especially. See, oh, look at these little guys. Oh, look at this. Very beautiful. Oh, this is like, this is like almost like a pitcher plant. Pitcher plants are insane. If anybody doesn't know what pitcher plants are, it's basically a plant that traps insects and like eat it. They 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 fall into like a, a shape of it that looks like a pitcher. Basically, they get dissolved by enzymes and it's a carnivorous plant. They're pretty cool. Oh, there's like a lot of outdoor wildflowers and stuff out here. Oh, we still want to see the carnivorous plants too, because yeah, they're going to have a pitcher plant. There's one right there. See the guy on the right? That guy on the right there? Yeah. That whole bottom part is like filled with like a uh, liquid with enzymes in it. And uh, it like produces this like sweet sort of nectar that draws insects to it. Then they fall in they get dissolved. Pretty gross, but pretty cool also. Man, look at all these beautiful wildflowers out here. All kinds of like butterflies and oh, like bees, other pollinators. Cool. But I want to see some carnivorous plants, yo. Carnivorous plants are uh, <laughs> they're pretty crazy. Right? Basically a plant that moved up on the food chain. It was sick of being at the bottom of the food chain. Moved its way up. Leveled up. Got like a cheat code and moved up and started eating insects. Sometimes even like frogs. Uh, nature. Nature's crazy. Alright, here they are. 
plantas carnívoras o carnívoras plantas carnívoras ok, here are the pitcher plants look at these things I've honestly never actually seen a pitcher plant um, like up close in real life I've only ever seen pictures and videos these are so cool so they they have these colors up near the top the speckled colors to attract insects the bottom is full of the you know like an enzyme liquid and the rim around the edge and the inside is coated with this like slippery waxy substance so once they fall in they can't get out and there's there's like all kinds of these things little ones big ones some of them are are really big these guys are pretty big look at the size of that thing for comparison like there's my there's there's my hand pretty big Cool. Oh, these are huge. Look at these ones. So gigantic. All right. Well, I've checked it off my bucket list. We've checked it off the bucket list now. We've seen pitcher plants in real life. That's cool. I did not expect that actually. Like, uh, Definitely, definitely wanted to come here to see plants in the Botanical Garden. But I did not expect to be able to see actual pitcher plants. That's cool. That's really cool. Because like I said, like I, I learned about those maybe, I don't know, four or five years ago from like a nature documentary. <laughs> I thought they were like the coolest thing. Like a plant that has evolved its way several ladder, several rungs up like the food chain ladder. I don't know, super cool, super cool to see in real life. All right, on the way over to the Japanese garden, we found these tree ferns, which are like super, super old prehistoric plants, billions of years before flowering plants. And uh, they're ferns, but they're the size of trees. Look at the size of this thing. Ferns, they make like a canopy. That's super cool. Apparently these uh, are still in the like Ecuador's rainforest in the Amazon, all over the place. Cool. El Museo de Bonsai. We're here. We're here at the Bonsai Museum. Bonsai. Now, bonsai trees, this, is, I didn't know. I mean, I, I, I learned this a while back. I don't know when exactly, but I always thought bonsai trees were kind of like their own special species of trees, but they're not. They're just like regular trees that when they, they're just constantly trimmed in such a way that they never grow any bigger than this. So this is like a juniper tree. But it's just tiny. And you can have all different kinds of bonsai trees. I mean, there's ones like this one, this juniper tree is probably the most like um, iconic one. The one that you see. If you, if you were to tell someone, hey, draw me a picture of a bonsai tree, they'd draw this basically, right? But there's all different kinds. I mean like this, this right here, this is like a uh, Pino Patula, different kind of tree. And these trees, like they, these look very different from what, like a typical, typical quote unquote bonsai tree, right? And they don't have just coniferous ones like junipers but they have like deciduous bonsai trees too, like this, right? And there are, of course, deciduous bonsai trees are just like regular trees. When the seasons change, the like leaves change, the colors of the leaves change, which is uh, super cool. I would like to see that. And of course there's like flowering trees, right? Like this. This is a, uh, a very, another like 
variation of a juniper tree, but this one has flowers on it. So cool. Looks like there was a Mitad del Mundo Arte Bonsai show, and this one was the best in show. This bonsai tree won a prize. Best in show. It's kind of hard to see it because it's up against the background of this bush that has very similar color and size leaves. But um, I will say from here, it has a very beautiful shape. I mean, it's really, really beautiful. And bonsai, of course, is like an art, you know, to trim them into a beautiful shape, into a tree that's basically like a work of art. Look at that thing. It's beautiful. So cool. They have a big collection here, too, man. Like, all of these in here. And all the way down there, there's more. This is like multiple bonsais. Can you see that? It's like multiple bonsais in one planter. Wow. cool to see sort of atypical bonsai trees, right? You see the ones, the juniper ones that you are used to seeing, but to see these like atypical ones is very cool. Wow. This is cool. They've kept like this dead um, branch section here as part of it. There's more over here. This is cool. Wow, look at this. Look at these. They're so tiny. There's like one, two, three, four, five, six, several little tiny, tiny, tiny little trees. Cool. A little acacia tree. These things are normally very big. <laughs> They're huge. Oh, look at this. It's an olive tree. Look at that. It's a tiny olive tree. <laughs> that is crazy. I mean, I imagine it never fruits, although I don't know. Like, bonsai trees are so tiny. They're just tiny little versions. I wonder if that thing actually, like, fruits. Does Can it generate enough energy to, like, make little tiny, teeny, tiny olives? Who knows? Who knows? Wow, here's one. I don't know what this is, but it has little berries on it. So maybe the olive tree could grow little olives. That would be so cool. Well, I think that's it for the bonsai garden. And uh, we are at the bathrooms. Okay, well, just in case you're ever here, there's bathrooms by the bonsai garden. And uh, let's go through here, because I think the Japanese garden is through here. Is it? Is this the Japanese garden? I don't know. It's pretty nice, whatever it is. We visited that Japanese garden in, uh, oh, actually, maybe this is the Japanese garden. We visited a Japanese garden in Santiago, actually, in uh, Cerro San Cristobal, the park, Parque Metropolitano, Cerro San Cristobal, the big hill with the teleferico. Had a park on it also with a bunch of stuff in it. One of those was a Japanese garden we went and visited. It's very beautiful. Wow. Yeah, look at this. I think this is the Japanese garden. across this bridge, little stone bridge. Very cool, it's very peaceful here.
Okay. I think now that we've seen now that we've seen pretty much everything here in the botanical garden, I think it's time to move on to the rest of Parque Carolina. All right, let's continue our walk through the park. We're out of the botanical garden now. That was very cool. That was the highlight, I think. I think it will be the highlight of the uh, the walk through the park. But I think now we're gonna head back. We're gonna keep heading north because we're about halfway through the park. The botanical garden sits sort of like right in the middle from north to south. And uh, if we keep heading north here, we're gonna get to the, uh, the cross, the big cross of the Pope. So we found the cross. Here it is, and it's big, very big. The Pope's cross right here. Wow, this is cool. I wonder now, right over here behind the cross, there's like a big athletic field that's has a track around it, like a running track, right? For jogging, walking, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, it's a big track. I'm guessing. I'm guessing from the size. I don't know. It looks like it's at least a kilometer, um, maybe even more. But I wonder where. I wonder where the Pope conducted this mass. If they put the cross here, I imagine. Maybe it happened right here on this field. There's a map here at the park we can take a look at since we're here. And you can see like all the stuff that they have in this park, right? The guide there, the key with all the stuff. They've got a lot of stuff. We're here at the cross. The botanical garden is here. The lake with the paddle boats is here. And down here is where we came in, um, over by the, uh, like the mall is right here basically. And the metro stop is over here. So we made our way all the way up to here to the cross, the big track, the athletic fields. And um, actually up here, you can't really see, but up here, this is basically right there. There's a big expo center where they can have like ex exhibitions and expositions. And then the entire Northern end of the park is basically like all athletic stuff, right? Basketball court, tennis courts, soccer field, a bunch of like smaller soccer fields and basketball courts up through here, and like tennis courts. It's really cool. This is a, it's a really nice park, honestly. To be honest, like it, it it's it's nice that it's just here for everybody. And uh, hmm, looks like there's a plane. Oh, we're, we're definitely going to have to go see that. I mean, the athletic fields are cool, but we're not going to, like, go play soccer or anything. But I do want to go see that plane. And then we can make our way all the way up here to the other exit, which is up by the Iñakito metro stop. And the mall, the Iñakito mall, where I think, actually, we're probably going to go get myself something to eat because it's getting kind of close to lunchtime. All right, well, we found... The plane. It's right here. Why is there a plane here? I have no idea. But it's cool. And if you've been watching some of my videos, you know I'm a nerd for planes. And this one's like all painted up. It says Quito on the side. Wow. Yeah, I'm a total nerd for planes. I've actually already been in a previous video here in Quito to the Quito uh, Air and Space Museum. We also went to an air and space museum in Santiago, Chile. That was really cool. Check the description for the links to those videos. Wow. Cool. Why is this plane here? I don't understand why this plane is here. Also, what kind of plane is this? Let's get up to the front and see. I have no idea what kind of plane this is. It's, uh, it's a passenger plane, even though it's painted. I can see there's windows, like passenger windows. It's got four engines, propeller. Looks like it's from, um, I don't know if I had to guess, 1950s maybe, early, or late 1940s. What kind of plane is this? 
Airplane nerds. Airplane nerds unite in the comments. Tell me what kind of plane this is. It's a cool plane, whatever it is. And it's cool that they painted it up, right? Cool. Maybe this is the highlight. <laughs> the highlight of the park is the plane. The highlight of the park, if you're a plane nerd like me, yeah, okay, then this is, this is the highlight of the park. But the botanical garden was cool. I mean, we saw pitcher plants, you know? We saw plants that eat insects. How cool is that? Looks like there's something nesting in here inside the engine. Still, very cool. Very cool to see. Man, look at the size of these wheels. This is crazy. This is like, I don't know, four feet? Four feet tall? One and a half meters, roughly? One and a third meters? About? Cool. Anyway, let's keep walking. We're here in the athletic field section. Other than this plane, there's basically just like a ton of athletic fields, a little playground for the kids, and uh, just more paths that go all the way up to, uh, to the uh, northern part of the park. So one thing we can see from here, like down by where the plane is, is if we look over to the west, zoom in, I think right there is Pinchicha. I think that's the, the top, because uh, I remember there were like some radio or cell phone towers up on top, and I can almost see a little building up there, which makes me think that that is actually where we were when we took the teleferico up to the top of Pinchicha. Cool. It's very cool. All right, so we made it to the north end of the park. Here it is. Here's the street on the north end of the park. Here's the metro station, Iñakito. And uh, you can see the park back down that way. Right across this, uh, this street here, I guess, or over in that direction. Yeah, like right there where the sign says Patio de Comidas, the food court. That's the mall. And we're gonna go visit the Patio de Comidas because I'm hungry and I wanna get something to eat. But uh, I think we call it. I think we call it for the video here. That was a good video. And I hope you enjoyed uh, checking out the park, Parque de la Carolina. I hope you enjoyed taking a walk through it with me on this beautiful, beautiful day here in Quito. Um, I hope you enjoyed the botanical garden and the bonsai trees. I think they were super cool. Seeing that uh, old plane all painted up in the middle of the park. A lot of cool stuff here in La Carolina. So if you're ever here in Quito and you want to go for a nice, relaxing walk uh, through uh, a beautiful park, this is the spot, Parque La Carolina. You can come to the La Carolina Metro stop down at one end, walk all the way up through the park, and end up here at Iñakito Metro stop. And then hop back on the Metro, take it back to wherever you're going. So that's gonna be it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Stick around, we're gonna have a lot more content here from, uh, from Quito, still coming. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next video.